Hello, Coach Jason here with ChessForAnyone.com and we're going to be looking at some common errors that beginners often make in their openings, some moves that we should all avoid. We'll go ahead and get into some examples. In the beginning of the game, in the opening, we should be trying to control the center of the board, which is why we normally would make moves like e4, e5, or d4, d5, knight to c6, knight to c3, knight to f3, also knight to f6. These are all great opening moves. Moving pawns in the center is generally a good thing, but really we should not be moving pawns unless they are freeing up our bishops and or they are attacking the center of the board. So sometimes though you'll see a beginner make a move like this and the reason I think a lot of times is that they want to get their rooks involved. If white just kind of continues developing normally and they try to do something like this, well the bishop can only attack the green squares on the board so he only can attack half the board, the rook can attack the entire board so if you can trade a bishop for a rook you should often do that. In most cases you're going to do that and it's working out well for you. Of course we would capture back probably with a knight in this situation because you don't want to double your pawns but this is some people don't realize that double isolated pawns are just kind of a bad thing. You don't want to do this. People might push the pawn an extra because they really like to get the rook out. They like to use the rooks. The problem is the rooks don't do very well on the open board. In the opening, rooks don't do well because they often get tangled in all the pieces that are out there. And if somebody is better at developing their knights and bishops, then they can trade their knights and bishops, or maybe even a pawn for a rook. And see, this rook is going to have to start moving around, and he's under attack here from the queen, so maybe they try to defend or something like that, but then you get another attack coming. Now the rook really has no place to go already. You wouldn't want to trade your rook for the knight here. He's worth much more than the knight. And so there's no place for him to really go here and you have to go back to your corner. So for this reason, we try to develop our pieces efficiently. You want to get your knights and bishops involved in the game as efficiently as you possibly can. So another problem beginners will often make is they will block themselves and play white with correct moves good moves and I'll show this mistaken move by black in a second here. So these are good solid moves and this seems like a good solid move, this bishop to d6 move, but it's really it's really not that great. And the main problem with it is it's blocking in black's own central pawn. So it's blocking this d pawn which we would like to be able to try to use it to help control the center and also this blocks the bishop. Of course the bishop come out a different way, but it's just going to stifle slow down development for black. So we want to kind of avoid blocking our own pawns, especially, well, especially central pawns. The side pawns aren't so bad. Another thing you might see is students do like a pawn wall. They like to do something like this just for no, no apparent reason. They start, they like this like staggered approach and they try to accomplish something like this. So in the opening, you want to develop your knights and bishops efficiently. Let's say they do something like this next. Now there's kind of holes in black's defenses. There's, of course, their knight and queen are guarding this right now. They're guarding this f6 square. There's no pawn that can ever guard that. There's no pawn that can ever guard d6. There's no pawn that can ever guard b6. And so this can cause some weaknesses. We don't really want to do this. We'd like to get our pieces developed efficiently. This is kind of what white is doing over here. And now the knight actually has nowhere to go because we, t we thought nothing of where we were putting our pawns. Ideally, you'd like to drop a knight, like I said earlier, on c6. Or, well, of course, we could play a knight here, but let's get chased away. You should not move a pawn. And this comes from the author of the modern theory of chess, Aron Nimzovich. It says that you should not move a pawn in the opening unless it attacks the center of the board or aids in the development of your pieces, which is really bishops, since the knights can just jump over. Another thing that people might do early in the game is develop the queen early, getting the queen involved super early. And this is a bad idea. We don't want to get the queen involved first thing in the game. She can end up being a target that can be attacked. And if she's being attacked by other pieces, she always has to back down. So here they're threatening to checkmate, kind of the scholar's mate in reverse. 
as black is doing it. And now we can just start chasing the queen around. She's, where's she gonna go here? She can't go in these squares because of the queen. Maybe she goes here and we can do something like this. Now we're threatening the bishop. We're threatening the queen at the same time. Queen's gotta run away somewhere. She's gotta save herself. Then we can go ahead and win the bishop. So you should also, you should also make sure that you have at least two or three other pieces developed before you start bringing your queen out. And you gotta be concerned about the threats that happen to your queen. This concludes our video on the opening moves you should avoid. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to know about other chess videos as I will be posting at least two per week. Also, please let me know what aspect of the game you would like to know about. If we get enough people looking for something, I will certainly make a video. Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you and have an excellent day.